Hey everybody, welcome back to the On This Day podcast. It's your host, Alex, and today we're talking swimming controversies. Yep, you heard that right, swimming controversies. Now you might be asking yourself, what the hell is a swimming controversy? How can there be any drama in a sport where the only rule is to stay in your own lane? Well, it turns out not even swimming is safe in the drama of this world. And the controversy we're going to be talking about today practically changed the face of the sport forever. So let's go back 60 years to the 1960 Summer Olympics to find out what really happened. Because on this day, John Devon and Lance Larson faced off in a 100 meter freestyle that forever changed the swimming world. You see, back in the 60s, everything was different. Everything was done by hand. There were no replays, no electric timers, just stopwatches and human judgment. Now you'd think this would cause a ton of trouble. After all, can you really trust humans with anything? But the results of the race seemed pretty clear cut. Each lane had three judges, and those judges were responsible for accurately recording the time of the swimmer in their lane. All three of DeVette's judges timed him in at 55.2 seconds, and two out of three of Larson's judges timed him in at 55.1. So it seemed pretty clear cut. Larson clearly won, as he clocked in 0.1 second earlier. But if that were the case, we wouldn't be talking about it now. I mean, come on, swimmer wins race really isn't an intriguing headline. So what happened? What's the controversy? Well, you see, the swimming authorities of that time, yes, there were swimming authorities, didn't really trust the stopwatches. So they completely disregarded them and decided to defer the judgment to the sideline judges. At that time, there were 24 judges in total. That's right, 24, 12 on each side. And so the swimming authorities asked three random judges who they thought came in first. Two said Devitt, and one said Larson. So then they asked three other judges who they thought came in second. Two said Larson, and one said Devitt. So if you're counting, three judges thought Devitt won, while the other three thought it was Larson. So yet again, the winner was undecided. So how did they break the tie? Well, according to the rules, ties like this were supposed to be broken by the timing machine. Whichever swimmer had the better time, won. Which, if you ask me, seems like the much easier solution. But Chief Judge Henry Runstromer had other plans, so he stepped in and officially declared Devitt the winner. He said that both swimmers should be recorded as having the same time, but Devitt would be the official winner and get the gold medal. So it was finally settled. John Devitt was the official winner, right? Actually, no. According to the rules, the chief judge doesn't have that authority. The timing machine was meant to be the tiebreaker, not the chief judge. So the USA team was pretty pissed, and rightfully so. Their swimmer was clocked in as having the faster time, but yet, he still came in second. And to top it off, they had video evidence showing that Larson was the one who touched the wall first, which would make him the gold medal champion. So with all this evidence in hand, they appealed only to be shot down. According to the appeal jury, John Devitt was still the rightful winner. Yup, no fairy tale ending here, just second place, which everyone knows is just first loser. But it's not all bad. Because of this incident, the Olympic Committee officially agreed to change their rules. Gone were the days of judges and stopwatches because now they were going with electric sensors. And by the time the 1968 Olympics rolled around, they were officially implemented. So hooray, the rules of swimming were officially changed. John Devitt got his gold medal and Lance Larson would never compete in another Olympics. Honestly, he was probably traumatized by a stolen victory. So the next time you watch the Olympics and see an electronic touchpad, you can thank Lance Larson for that. Seriously, go ahead and thank him. The guy needs all the encouragement he can get. But hey, that's how sports goes. And on this day in 1960, the swimming world was changed forever. Thanks for listening, everybody. If you enjoyed that, download, write a comment, send me some money. I won't complain. Um, Do all that fun podcast stuff. I really thank you guys for listening, for your support, and I hope to see you guys tomorrow. Bye, everybody.